again. Welcome to Teaching Natural. My name's Dare. I am a seventh year high school English teacher in SoCal or Southern California. And this is my November budget video. It's coming out a little late because I was sick and lost my voice the first week of November. So I had to do all of the planning and I actually need to start packing and getting ready for my flight home. So I'm just going to run through really quick what my November expenses are looking like as well as excuse you, some of the trackers that I filled in. So starting off my credit card synchrony, this is for my mattress. The remaining balance was $1,000. My minimum payment is $127 and it is the card with the highest balance. So I just put my minimum monthly payment towards it this month. Uh, this card is on 0% interest until March, 2026. So there's no penalty for me only paying the minimum. My next card is my Chase Southwest card. I always pay this card off every month, so the balance is zero. It has the highest interest rate at 20%, which is why I make sure that I always pay the balance off so that I never pay interest on it. ADT came out this month. Cox is going to come out. Um, ADT is $22.99. Cox, I actually lowered it a few dollars, so that is $90. Netflix is $15.49. Disney Plus is $16.99. I am flying home, so I need to pay for parking. Parking is $137. And then this card has an annual fee. The annual fee is $99, but I just go ahead and round up to $100. So the total for that will go on my Chase credit card is going to be $382.47. My student loan payment, we are still in forbearance at 0% interest, so I am crushing this student loan. My minimum payment is $334.47, and I added an extra $776.60 to put it at, I think, like $1,111, and then there might be some change on there. Rent and utilities this month is $2,671.59. Groceries slash restaurants is $400. Gas for Emmett. I'm only going to do $120 this month because, again, I am flying home. So that means I'm not going to be driving as much. And it's November, so it is also Thanksgiving break will be this month. That week, I will not be driving as much. And then I have some other um, days off this month. So I just won't be driving as much. With gas and electric, the gas and electric company gives us a rebate in October. So my gas is only $7.61 this month. Car insurance, $135.90. I'm not going to contribute anything to my month ahead this month because I am traveling. So, uh, I just don't have the same amount of funds and I also have to pay my DMV registration. So just not enough to put into month ahead this month. Same with the emergency fund. I'm not going to be contributing this month. My sinking funds, I am going to put $169. My DMV registration, uh, I thought it was $241, but I got that mixed up with my Adobe Acrobat subscription last month. So my DMV was actually $246. And so I just paid on Netflix. I just paid um, $1149. And I took money out of my emergency fund to cover that extra $5. It's no big deal. My nails, I am not going to get a pedicure this month, but I am going to just get a color change. So that obviously will not be as expensive as a full pedicure. So $65 for nails. On my trip, I am withdrawing $100 in cash out of the ATM because I never travel without having cash. That leaves my entire expenses total at $3,910.10. In my checking account, we had $5,531.60. My expenses all totaled up came out to $5,530.64, remainder one. So I just added that $1 to sinking funds to make it an even $170. Transferred $465 to my cash wallet. 
transferred 120 to gas, like I said, um, nothing in month ahead, nothing in emergency. 100 of those dollars went to, uh, 100 of the sinking fund dollars went to travel for Disneyland. And 70 of those dollars went to my me fund for getting my eyebrows microbladed in the summer. So in my necessities, go into my debt one. I was super excited with my debt because I was able to color the 20%. My student loan is now down to $23,999 and like 26 cents, something like that. So I am 20% paid off. By the end of this school year, so by June 2025, I will be hitting the $15,000 mark. I'm on track. So by the end of this school year, I will have 50% of my student loan paid off, which puts me on track to pay off my student loan by 2026 when I turn 32. So I'm really proud of myself, really excited that we're getting this done. On my mattress debt we are so close to finishing so I was able to color in the 30% so now we've just got the 20% and the 10% I am on track to have this paid off by June 2025 which is great because again it is 0% interest until March 2026 so we will be all good and then once I pay this off the minimum monthly payment of 127 will get added to my student loan payment every month. So I'll just be increasing how much money I'm paying for my student loan. Okay, so those are for debt. And then my emergency fund, I don't think I did the calculations. Okay, no, I didn't. So with my emergency fund, I figured out what the issue with my car was. Um, my tire pressure sensor broke. And so thank goodness my car was still under warranty because I would have been, huh, would have been real irritated. So for my previous paycheck, I put back, oh, sorry. So for October 19th, I spent $285.46. That was for my oil change, which would have had to be done in December anyway. And that's when I had my car evaluated. So then I had to take Emmett back this month and I only had to pay $100 for my um, warranty deductible. That appointment was on the second. So now in my emergency fund for my car, there is $664.54. I am not in a ridiculous rush to put that money back in to get it to $1,000. I'm going to do it next school year. But right now, my biggest bill that I'm really focusing on is my student loan. Like I really want to start putting my student loan and I feel comfortable that $664 is still enough money where if something unplanned pops up, I will still be able to pay it off. So I am going to build up my emergency fund. I'm just not going to do it right now because I still have my month ahead fund and I want to get that student let student loan debt down before that interest kicks back in in I'm guessing in January now. Sinking funds. Okay. With my sinking funds, like I said, I added $70. So that made my sinking fund for myself $426.57. So I was able to color in Another lipstick. I am almost halfway done to my goal of $1,000 for microblading. And I looked at the microblading place that I'm going to go to. The total is going to come out to like $885. So 
plus tip, it will be under a thousand dollars, but I'm still going to save up a thousand just because I like round numbers and whatever's left over. I can just keep it in there. I'll spend it. We'll figure that out when we get there. That in. Next. Travel. We put this money in for our park tickets. So like I said, I put $100. So that was able to color off another ticket. I am almost halfway done with raising the money for my tickets. I know the Disneyland tickets for my dad and I are not going to be $1,000. But again, I like nice round numbers. And beyond the thousand dollars i will just spend that money on the hotel or spend that money on food if my dad decides to do the hotel which he usually pays the hotel and i cover tickets and food yeah my dad usually covers hotel and parking okay i know that was super fast but needed to get it all done let me know how are your budgeting goals going for the year have you had any surprises that popped up that you were not planned for? Hopefully you had an emergency fund that helps you out. If you have any new seeking funds that you are starting, let me know. In the meantime and in between time, take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next one. Bye.